Rafael, Mexico, in Churchill. Hey everybody, I'm Abel Key, and this is Scarvlog, and is also stupidly cold out right now. So, yeah, kind of curious as to what the fuck I'm out here doing this for. <laughs> it is like just barely above freezing right now. So, I've got a nice cigar, nice long cigar, from a much warmer climate. As you can see, it's got a nice, good, dark wrapper. Construction seems pretty good, no huge veins or any major construction issues right from the get-go. I like how dark it is. It tells me it's going to be uh, hopefully a little bit more flavorful than uh, some of the lighter ones. That said, the previous one that I had, the Turknia, which is still makes me still a little, still a little bit of a head scratcher for me. Uh, that was actually quite nice. So hopefully this one will follow suit. This is part of the uh, Don Rafael Countries uh, line. Apparently this is actually limited production. So they actually don't put out a whole lot of these per year. And I think this is actually kind of a newer thing. But uh, there's a whole number of countries from Mexico to Tecnia, wherever the fuck that is. Uh, Ecuador, US, all kinds of other things. Uh, they also have a Brazilian line. i try to see, hello, come on, what the hell, okay. Come on, focus. Thank you. Come on, focus. Dookie dookie. Yep, never fails every time. Yeah, I focus. My camera focus decided to interrupt my sins. Anyway, uh, they have a Brazil line, which I'm gonna try to see if I can find a CAO Brazil for comparison. Well, anyway, focus permitting. I'm gonna go ahead and get this lit up. So I already pre-cut it before I left the house. So I'm gonna get this lit up and get back to you after it's going. decent light. Never fails. 37 degrees, cloudy, dreary. By all accounts, a miserable day. There's somebody out here walking the dog. Every time. Every time. So, right off the foot, uh, initial flavor profile is uh, kind of leathery. Yeah. A little bit of leather with a slight pepper in the background. Hmm, interesting. It's kind of this earthy, leather, le earthy leathery quality. Uh, I want to say a pepper, but not really. If there's any kind of spice oil, it's extremely subtle. So, overall, an, overall an interesting start. My teeth are kind of sticking to my lips for some reason. I'm going to try to avoid dog people and uh, cyclists. I'll get back to you after about an inch and see if this kind of picks up a little bit. Alright, so about an inch in. Honestly, it's kind of uh, giving me some serious coffee vibes. The thing is, it's all very, very subtle. And I'm kind of hoping that it does be uh, Mia dead. I just, I can't get over the name Turkmenia. I have no idea what the hell that means. <laughs> it is still bothering me. <laughs> anyway, uh, I'm kind of hoping it does what that one did. It kind of ends up having a built, uh, building flavor. I'm hoping that it does that. This so far right now, it's just really light, really subtle, really faint. The flavor that I am getting, though, is... Kind of like a coffee vibe. A little earthy, a little leathery, a little coffee ish. Touch of pepper. Very, very, very subtle though. As in, barely discernible flavor at all. I said the retro hail is kind of neat. It's kind of a sweet cinnamon. Very interesting, the best of your nose. Every so often I have to look around and make sure there's not something that can look around and jingle my horns. I have no idea what the hell I just said. Anyway, moving right along. <laughs> So far, the flavor of this is uh, extremely subtle. So I'm hoping that by the halfway point, this ends up picking up. Other than that, it is cold out here. So this is going to be an interesting day. Let's get back to you at the halfway point. All right, so the ash just spilled clean. I'm still looking around because I've seen at least four people on bicycles and it's 37 degrees over, which is insane. Anyway, the ash just fell off. And I've been trying to pinpoint exactly what kind of flavors I'm getting out of this. It's very, very subtle at this point, which is kind of weird, but uh, I 
getting this kind of, uh, not gonna lie, there is a definite bitterness. There's also the occasional sweetness, along with this kind of uh, campfire earthiness with a, with a touch of coffee. If anything, I suppose I could probably liken this to maybe having an espresso outside of a bakery in front of a campfire, kind of. And somebody's railing a ladder over there, what they're doing. Oh, they're getting ready to kill themselves. This is Colorado, and uh, people kind of going to be asleep at the wheel. Overall, though, uh, I have noticed the Retro Hill has kind of taken on this uh, sweet kind of yeasty breadiness kind of. This is kind of where I get some of the uh, baby notes. I'm not going to lie, the foot smoke, if you just smell it just straight off the oval, it's a little accurate. So I don't know what's going on with that. You don't taste it at all. But you're just, you're just sitting here burning. You kind of get over the... Hmm. Interesting. Yeah. I still just, the flavors are just really, really light, so I'm having a real hard time trying to pinpoint exactly what I'm getting out of this. Anyway, I'm going to go ahead and take the bands off here, and uh, typically the band is supposed to be right here. It's kind of it's kind of sad to do a little shimmy up and down to the, uh, the actual stick here, so I'm going to go ahead and take these off and get down to uh, about where the band would be, and I'll give you another update then. Okay, down to the band. And I gotta keep an eye out. I've seen at least a half dozen people out here walking the dog, running, bicycling. Doesn't matter. Except that when I come out here, there's always everybody, you know, just everybody the brothers, uncle, second cousin, twice removed. All acting like it's a nice sunny day. It is not a nice sunny day. <laughs> so, up to the band here. So far, flavors have been completely unchanged, and uh, I've had to do a touch-up in a relight. The relight was kind of my fault because I kind of started thinking, and just my mind started wandering. I was not smoking. So far, yeah, flavors are completely unchanged. Uh, I'm still getting that uh, slight bitterness, a little coffee, you know, a little earthiness. Occasionally, a little sweet, a little, bit, a little bittersweet. So. Kind of campfire smoking this kind of deal. Other than that, yeah, it's been uh, really uneventful. Truth be told, I have ever noticed that uh, the draw was starting to get a little stiff. And I looked at it, and I don't know if you can see it, but it's definitely starting to get to be a little bit of a tar uh, mix in the leaves. So that kind of tells me that maybe this tobacco could probably stand to be fermented a little longer. Uh, thing is that it's expensive because it takes some space to get used for something else. So if you ever get if you ever get a box of these, I would definitely recommend maybe aging these for a year or two, upwards of about five years. Granted, that's kind of a long time for a cigar. It's probably not quite uh, nice enough for it. <laughs> and, you know, I've had some kind of strange results where I've had cigars just uh, sit in my humidor for like three years. Like, you know, when I first got, they were like chalky and nasty. After three years or so, uh, <clears throat> and the humidor, they ended up being actually pretty nice. So, you know, I don't know, it might be worth uh, just letting me sit around for a little bit. So far, between here and the end, uh, I don't really anticipate a whole lot of change other than the typical blech that uh, happens at the end of every cigar. Uh, drink comparison, uh, drink um, pairings that I would recommend. Uh, I want to see maybe a peaty scotch, uh, tequila, whiskey, rye whiskey. Any kind, of, any kind of decent coffee. Other than that, there's really not been a whole lot to really write home about with this sucker. Uh, I kind of want to see maybe, if you're looking for the different uh, lines in a, a more affordable cigar line, that are kind of a like country's kind of thing, you might want to pass on this one because the flavors in this are just so muted and so subtle that you're probably going to end up double puppy trying to get anything and end up getting a lot of bad men as a result. So, not a bad cigar, but definitely could be a lot better. I'm definitely going to say that one. Other than that, though, you know, it's actually been a pretty decent smoke, you know. Not uh, my particular flavor profile, but there's definitely a market for it. I can see that. Okay, <clears throat> so this is what happened at the end of the uh, 
Don Rafael, Mexico. Uh, I was talking while I'm doing my thing, and out of nowhere, my phone beeps, and my battery just says, Oh, I did! Bleh. So, that was pretty much the end of that. So, all I had to do was uh, come back, let my phone charge a bit, and ponder why exactly my phone died before it should have. Only thing I can chuck it up to is cold. It was cold as shit outside, and that is notorious for killing battery life. So, anyway, in closing, uh, final thoughts on the Don Rafael Mexico, and I keep wanting to call it Ryan Mexico because I got that wired in my head for some reason. But, uh, overall, it's not a bad cigar by any stretch, but it's definitely not a great cigar. I also noticed some severe tarring towards the end of it, which tells me that the overall uh, tobacco fermentation progress, or process, I should say, was perhaps not where it should have been. It maybe could benefit from another six months to a year on the rack. But it gets expensive to do that because it takes some space, obviously, and they could be using for something else. So one possible solution to maybe mitigate that is, I want to say maybe age it for six months to a year, three uh, would be a good one. Five would be really pushing it. But uh, definitely, I want to say the age, the uh, Don Rafael Mexico, but if you really don't want to put that much time into what's basically a budget cigar, it might be a better idea to just kind of skip this one. Otherwise, definitely not a bad cigar by any stretch. It's definitely got its appeal, and it's just uh, not that appealing to me is all. I mean, I'm, I'm not saying like I don't like it. I'm just saying I don't particularly care for that particular flavor profile. Well, anyway, that's about all I have to say about that. If you like this video or any other video, like, subscribe, leave a comment, and uh, let me know if you can figure out what in the hell turkey means. I figure it's turkey, but uh, I just don't know what language. Anywho, that's all I got. I'll see you next time.